Hi, I'm Gareth Green and in this video we're going to have a little think about a topic that vexes many musicians. It's this, performing from memory. And actually memorising music and performing from memory is something that comes very easily to some people and to other people it seems well nigh impossible. So I suppose the first question is, do you actually need to play from memory? It may seem a funny question, but actually most people don't really need to. I mean, if you're an aspiring concert pianist or a concert violinist, well, you definitely need to be able to play from memory because that is a performing convention. Um, but it's funny, isn't it, how we expect some musicians to perform from memory and others not to. You can't walk onto an operatic stage as a singer holding a score in your hand. But if you're singing oratorio, well, that's absolutely fine. It's an accepted convention, isn't it? Um, so kind of in some fields, yes, in some fields, no. But most people actually don't need to memorise. So I think the first thing I'm going to say is just try and relax about that a little bit. Um, but even if you're not looking for a career as some kind of solo performer, there are still good reasons to memorise. And really that's where we might just have a little focus in our video today. Um, even if you perform with the music, I've always thought it's a very good idea to be able to play from memory. It's a sign of how well you actually know the score. And it encourages you as the performer to use your ears more than you use your eyes, which actually always enhances an expressive outcome. It's interesting that, isn't it? You know, we, we know this thing, don't we, about when one of our senses shuts down, actually other senses pick up. So it's interesting I found over the years of teaching people who are blind that actually their oral skills are often much sharper simply because they can't see. When we're reading a piece of music, if we're lucky enough to have sight, well, we're so busy looking at all the notes on the page, maybe sometimes we're not really listening in the same way that we might if we didn't have that distraction. So, you know, that's a good reason, isn't it, to be able to play from memory. I think also being able to play from memory assists other musical skills like improvisation, for example. If we get used to playing from memory, then when we want to improvise, we have a somehow a greater facility. Um, obviously, if you're performing in public, um, playing from memory certainly reduces the barrier between you as the performer and the audience if you haven't got scores in the way. I mean, the number of times I've sat in, in an exam room or adjudicating a music competition of some kind, and the first thing a performer does is position a stand so that it's a barrier between them and the audience. And then they have this little private communication with their score and with their music stand, and the audience might as well not be there. So it can be a terrible wall between the performer and the audience. But let's just think before we go on to some practical tips about the essential avenues that you might use to explore the topic of developing memory skills. And some of you will have different preferred routes from others, that's absolutely to be expected. So what are these kind of basic four avenues? Well, one is visual, visual memory. Another is auditory, so auditory memory, motor memory is a third. And the fourth I'm going to suggest is analysis. So that's quite interesting just to think, well, what do we mean by that? You know, are you someone who naturally looks, uses your eyes, takes in the landscape, and that's how you remember? Are you someone who just needs to listen to the thing over and over again, and then you kind of take it in by ear? We hear about lots of people who play by ear who don't even read music, but they've got a really good auditory memory. Motor memory, you know, what do I mean by that? Well, kind of fingers, muscle memory, all that kind of stuff. And what do I mean by analysis? Well, it's kind of, you know, looking at a score, thinking what are the melodic patterns? What are the chord movements? What are the functions from one chord to the next? So that you have a kind of analytical way of remembering how the music progresses from one place to the next. So, 
you're bound to have a preferred option from that list. And if you have a preferred option, well, use it as your primary means of doing it. But at the same time, you might think about those other things because if you can develop the other routes as well, they're probably going to support your preferred route. So if you're the sort of person who just needs to look at the music and keep looking at it until you've taken it in, well, also try to work on those auditory skills. If you're looking at the music, well, try to analyze it while you're looking at it as well. And don't forget this thing about finger patterns, motor memory and so on that are going to help you do that. So whichever is your primary point of entry, all I'm saying is, try to explore the other three as well. Because one thing's for sure, memorizing is a skill. So I think the first thing is if you're trying to memorize, you know, don't be defeated by saying, I can't do it. Um, but it's just a kind of thinking your way into those four different ways of going about it. Okay, well, bearing all that in mind, I'm just gonna give you now a series of tips so that you can think about those four avenues in relation to these tips and think, is there something here that I could run with? And my first tip is this, start with small chunks. Don't try to memorize a whole concerto in one go as your first step to memorizing a piece of music. It's too much to take on and you'll probably be utterly defeated by it. So why not just start with a handful of bars? You know, can I memorize something very straightforward? Even something like, can I play happy birthday to you? Can I memorize that? Because if I can memorize that, it's a very useful thing to memorize because what do people always ask musicians to do at somebody's birthday? If there's an instrument there, they want you to play happy birthday to you. So what a useful thing to be able to do anyway. But to use something like that as a way of developing a memory skill. So just a handful of bars. And then you can kind of build up. I mean, I suppose a parallel to that is, you know, last year I started a bit of an exercise program. And uh, this is something I've, to be honest, never done in my life. But, I, you know, nothing kind of radical either, but, but basically walking and, and starting off by doing relatively short distances that seemed quite hard work to me. But actually what I've noticed is that what happens, the distance gradually gets longer, the speed gradually gets faster, the whole process gradually gets easier. You know, you build up from a, a small starting point. Same things here. If you can kind of memorize something like happy birthday to you, well, great, then think, well, what happens if I try to memorize something that's a bit longer than that? And you can gradually build up your, your capacity. So there's the first tip, start with small chunks. Uh, the second tip, um, before kind of really setting about the task of memorizing, I think it's a good idea actually to learn the piece well or to learn the section of the piece well. You know, don't start by saying, here's a new piece of music I've never come across in my life. The first thing I'm going to do is memorize it. Start by actually learning the piece, which may seem a very obvious thing to say. But the more you learn it, the more you know it, the more likely you are to have started the process of memorizing anyway. And while you're doing that, I know this is going to be an, an extra demand, but I think it's quite important. Not only are we trying to memorize notes and rhythm, but also make sure we've got the expressive detail in. So make sure you learn the whole package as well as trying to memorize it. So thinking about things like dynamics, phrasing, tempo, any other indications in the score. Be detailed about that because I do find that actually even people who've got good memory skills often kind of focus on remembering the notes and the rhythms, but they don't really absorb the rest of it. Uh, so you hear them play from memory quite fluently and you think, actually, these dynamics are not right or we're not observing this phrasing or we've missed out details like Swart Sandy or some tempo change or something. So it's important to take on board the whole package. And I think actually, in a way, far from confusing you, all these elements kind of help each other in the memorizing process. So that's tip two, learn the piece well, learn it thoroughly, get all the detail in, that will start to uh, develop the memory process. Tip three sort of follows on from that really, because I'm gonna suggest that memorizing is itself a process. You know, when a chunk has been memorized, well, try it out. 
Let's see what happened. It's unlikely to be completely absorbed straight away. Even if you've worked on memorizing something, then you try it and then something goes wrong. So what worked? What didn't work? Let's just try and evaluate it. And, and really, in a way, memorizing, it's about increasing the hit rate. It's funny, I found this constantly afflicts me really, that there are some bits you just remember straight away, no trouble at all. Other bits you think, oh, always fall over that corner. What happens there, you know? And it's getting to grips with what is it that didn't quite work, you know? Um, checking out, are there some notes that got missed somewhere? Was there some rhythmic detail that we weren't 100% sure about? Is it, well, I got the right chord, but I didn't quite distribute the notes within the chord quite accurately. Is it, yeah, I have got the notes, but I haven't got some of the expressive detail, you know? Um, some people I've known over the years have even found it helpful to write out parts of the score. That may seem a really funny thing to do, right? actually, to, to write it down. But actually, what do we do when we're kind of revising for academic exams, you know? Uh, I mean, I've got four children all going through this process of revising for exams and so on. What do they do? They sit with a piece of paper sometimes and they write bullet points. They make flashcards, you know, make notes. So they've got all their notes, but they, they make summary notes. It's just a way of trying to um, impose the information in the memory, isn't it? So we do that routinely in terms of sort of academic um, exams and so on, making summary notes, bullet points, you know, even just copying out the text directly in order to try and remember it. So we could do the same, couldn't we? So if it's helpful, maybe just sit down and copy out the notes, copy out the musical detail, or even if you don't want to do the whole thing, maybe just jot down a chord sequence or jot down a melodic line, anything that's going to help trigger the memory of the moment. It's really gone out of fashion, this idea of copying out music. But in the past, it's often the way composers learned their trade was by copying out the music of others. Um, but it's a useful memory skill. We, we know that's true in other areas of our lives. So it's a thought maybe to apply it to helping to memorize music. Okay. Tip number four. This is about memorizing the sound of the piece. It's really about that focus on the oral skills and using the oral skills to, to really enhance what we're doing that's going to engage with a memory process. So in other words, you know, what, what does this melodic line sound like? Well, what do I mean by that? Sometimes it's even things like you could uh, listen to a melodic line and draw a graph of it. You know, here's a melodic line, it starts here, it rises, it comes to a peak, and then it falls again. And then suddenly there's a big leap and then it comes down by step. You know, you can almost paint the contour of the line and sometimes have that kind of picture. So what does it sound like? You know, and you've got a, a kind of mental visual image to support the sound as well that helps you remember the sound of it. Really hear the dynamics, you know, don't just look at them and think, oh yeah, it says forte or it says piano. Actually hear them so that you think, yeah, actually that's now in my oral memory, hearing those dynamics. Same for the articulation, the tempo changes and so on. And this little connection between visualizing what we hear and hearing what we visualize. I think that's a constant interplay that's important for any musician, but especially if, when you're trying to memorize. Playing the sound of the piece over and over in your mind is a very useful thing to do. I must say it's something that often keeps me awake at night. And I know other musicians have the same affliction. A piece of music that's just going around your head that you're working on or you're working on with somebody else or something that's intriguing you and you're wanting to try and understand something about it. And it just plays over and over again. Actually, that process of repetition is committing it to memory, isn't it? Um, record yourself playing the piece from the music and then, then duet with your recording from memory. Let's see if just duetting with yourself, if there is some little trip up somewhere, well, can you get straight back in again? And does it help to duet with yourself, you know? Um, duet with another player, maybe using YouTube or some other recorded source, you know? So 
using your ear to duet with somebody else. And sometimes even little mistakes that maybe we don't notice when we're memorizing, when you're duetting with somebody else, you think, oh, hold on, there's, there's a wrong note there. Or why is this other person playing this bit so much louder than I am? Oh, I've forgotten about that forte over there. So it's quite useful as a, as a reflective process working essentially with another player in that way. Okay, this takes us to tip number five, and you see how this all relates to my original list, really, of thinking about visual and, and auditory, motor memory, and analytical approach. So tip number five is about muscle memory. So on the piano, for example, your fingers, and more directly, your brain, can remember where to go next. It's a kind of processing of the order of events. We, we look for certain patterns in the music. We think sometimes, oh, that fingering, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, that helps us to memorize a passage. I mean, and I often draw this parallel. It's a bit like driving a car, really. If you think about everything you have to do when you set off driving a car, it's actually quite a huge list. But eventually, because you've repeated that so often, it's been committed to memory, that it just becomes an automatic process. And I've been kind of reminded of that, that um, helping a daughter learn to drive. And I have to kind of stop and think, goodness me, what have we got to do next? So before we set off, okay, we've got to be in neutral. We've got to turn the engine over. We've got to put a foot on the clutch. We've got to take a gear. We've got to get a hand on a handbrake. We've got to look in the mirror. We've got to get a signal. We've got a few revs. We've got to bring the clutch up, let the handbrake go. Oh, all these things. When I set off in the car, I don't think about any of that stuff. I just think I want to go and it happens. Why is that? It's a totally automatic process because I've been driving for uh, more years than I care to mention. Uh, so it's memorized. It's a memorized automatic process. So do you see humans are creatures of repetition, aren't we? The, if we want to get good at something, we repeat it until we've memorized the process. So even watching your hands actually can enhance this whole process, just seeing what you're doing with this muscle memory. So again, it's kind of you see, a combination is using these visual memory skills with motor memory skills, you know, just watching it, thinking about it. You can even practice pieces away from your instrument. I think that's a really useful thing to do. We often think that all practice has to be done at the instrument. Don't agree with that, actually. Sometimes with things like muscle memory, it's very useful just to go over something on a tabletop or even on your knees or something. And I can think of many a, a train journey or a bus journey that I've used in order to practice and to memorize just by going through the whole kind of muscle memory process, really. There's no sound there, but I can imagine the sound. I can hear it in my head while I'm doing that muscle memory stuff. So you can, again, combine it. You know, you see it, you hear it, you analyze it, you do this stuff. You don't have to be at the instrument to do that. But muscle memory and the way it combines with some of these other skills is my tip number five. Okay, tip number six is this. Some people have a photographic memory. And if you're not one of those people, probably like me, wouldn't you just love to have a photographic memory? I mean, I remember one musician I, I knew in years gone by who was very impressive because he literally just looked at a page of music, took a kind of mental photograph of it, and he knew what was there. I remember him going to the library at university and just sitting there with scores, took a picture of it, went away and thought about it. And he would say, well, you know, bar 16, it's halfway through the line three, and there's this chord, just literally off this mental photograph. Well, fantastic. So he didn't have any trouble memorizing. He didn't understand what the problem was with memorizing because he just replayed the photograph of the score in his mind. Okay, well, most of us don't have that kind of photographic memory, but in a way, it is possible to develop an ability to see the score in your mind even when it's not in front of you. I know sometimes when I'm teaching somebody and maybe I just haven't quite got hold of a score when, we, when we're starting on something, and I think I know where that is, it's on the fourth line of the first page and, and this is what's happening there. So sometimes you can sort of develop some of that photographic memory principle. 
not a bad idea just to take in where are we on the page, what's going on. And in fact, even if you're ultimately going to play with music, but you're trying to play from memory, but you've got the score there in case you need it, having this slightly photographic approach is useful because you know the danger is when you're not looking at a score and you're concentrating on your playing and then you look up you suddenly think where am I? So if you've got that you sort of think I know where I am, I'm, I'm here. So when you look up you'll be in the right place again. So quite a useful thing to think about even if you haven't got a photographic memory what is it that you can do to take some kind of photograph of the page and have an awareness of what it looks like and what's going on. Okay, tip number seven is this. If you're memorizing a piece that also involves other musicians, well, one thing you've got to think about is how does your part interact with what other people are doing? So if you're accompanying somebody or you're playing chamber music or you're playing in a band or something, what's everybody else up to? You know, it's important to be aware of this anyway when you're performing. You know, it's hopeless if you're just playing your part and ignoring everybody else. But it's also a very useful memorizing tool. And sometimes your memory is triggered by thinking, ah, when I hear this coming from someone else, I know that's when I do this. So kind of taking in the whole as a kind of memory thing. And often I think that has an oral focus to it. But depending on how much of the whole score you can see, it might be a bit visual as well. Okay, tip number eight to go back to somewhere where we started, be analytical. Understand the structure of the piece. You know, if you know that this piece is in ternary form, it's going to have an A section, a contrasting B section, the A section comes back. Well, if you know that, that's really useful, isn't it? Because you know when it comes back, that's the bit you played earlier. Or when it comes back, is it exactly the same? Or is it different? If it's different, have you rehearsed the differences? Are you crystal clear about what it does the first time, what it does the second time? Because that's a memory hole when sometimes people come into that final section and they play the same as they did the first time and then they forget, oh no, this bit's in a different key the second time. And that's where it can trap you. So, you know, making sure you've got this analytical approach. So you understand the structure of the piece, uh, what I call the kind of global structure, but also then thinking about the internal structure. Well, what's going on here? I've got a two bar phrase, a two bar phrase, a four bar phrase, you know, two, a two, another four. That helps, it has a kind of rhythm and organization to it that helps you remember what's going on. Um, how does one section or phrase or chord progress to the next, you know? So here's a kind of questioning phrase followed by an answering phrase. Well, we kind of learn those two things together, don't we? That helps us, you know, or how does this chord go on to that chord? Or there's a perfect cadence at this point. So I know it's going chord five followed by chord one, you know. All these things are helpful to be analytical about melodic structure, harmonic structure, rhythmic structure, the structure in general of the piece, all these things help. So being analytical and seeing where things are identical, where they're different, where they're completely different, where they're a little bit you know, marginally different, uh, the most dangerous thing in a memory process really. But the more we can be aware of it, the better. Okay, tip number nine may seem a bit wacky, but it might be helpful to some people. Try putting words to melodic lines when you're playing instrumental music. I mean, if you're singing, Words are a great assistance, aren't they? You tend to remember the words and then you remember the melodic line and the rhythm that's associated with it. So if you're playing an instrument, well, sometimes putting words to it does actually enable uh, a memory of pitch and rhythm. So that may seem ridiculous, but sometimes it's a helpful thing. Or even if it's just a corner that you're having trouble memorizing, try putting some words to it, see if it helps you. And if you can think of appropriate words, they might also remind us of dynamics and other expressive detail as well. So that's tip number nine. And finally, tip number 10 is this. Just remember, memorizing is a journey. Um, so you have to assist this journey. Have the music open even when you think you've memorized it as part of the process. So you try to play from memory, but you refer to the music when you need to and just kind of flip between memory and reading. 
so you can kind of gradually wean yourself off the score. In other words, this whole thing about the process. Um, looking back over the corners that weren't reliable in your memory, just thinking, well, why did I need to look at the score there? What was it that I forgot to do there? And I think at the bottom line of all this is to think of memory as a process and it's about increasing the hit rate as you go. So if you try to memorize something and it doesn't work, don't beat yourself up. Congratulate yourself on the things that you did remember and then use that as your inspiration to say, well, if I can remember that, I can remember this. And if you see this as a, an evolving situation, a journey, then I think you'll find that you'll find that the processing task is one that you'll get better at. And then memorizing the music doesn't seem this awfully daunting objective um, that seems too much. So I hope some or all of that will be helpful to you and that there are things in this video that resonate with you because you think, oh yeah, actually that's how it works for me or that's where it always goes wrong for me. And that might just give you a few pointers in developing those memory skills. But I just want to end where I started. You know, most people will not need to memorize music. Is it a good idea to be able to memorize music? Absolutely. But don't let it stop your enjoyment of music if memorizing is just something that totally defeats you. Don't worry about that for one moment. But I hope there's some helpful uh, hints and tips in there somewhere. So have fun learning music, performing music, and memorizing it if you can.